Girl Class. Hi guys, hope you're all safe. A little cameo from Mrs. Bowler. Okay, um, welcome to another episode of The Creakers. Um, I'm in school today actually, and it's been lovely. We've been drawing out on the playground with chalk and things, um, doing some English and math. So I hope you're all getting on well at home, and I hope you've had a great weekend enjoying the sunshine because it's going to go soon, unfortunately. So let's carry on. Norman lifted up the mattress and rested it against the wall as Ella pulled the curtains back, allowing the morning sunlight to flood the room with its warmth. They stood side by side, staring through the bed slats at the floorboards beneath. Floorboards that were usually kept in darkness, hidden in shadow. Now they were exposed to sunlight. All at once, Norman and Della could see what they were hiding. The solid wooden floor beneath the bed bubbled and hissed like a witch's cauldron as the sunlight was shone directly onto it. Norman, look, Ella said, noticing something out of the window. From Lucy's bedroom, they could see curtains opening in the bedrooms of every house across Whiffington. And, as sunlight flooded in through the windows, a strange crumbling sound started coming from the floor. They both jumped back from the unmade bed and saw the strangest thing ever. The floorboards began to shift and wobble. And then they started swirling. What had once been solid wood was now a twirling whirlpool into another world. Look at the floorboards there. Do you think this is happening in all the other bedrooms in Whiffington? asked Ella. I don't know, but I do know we're going to need some help, Norman said. Help with what? This is a rescue mission now, and we're the only ones who know about the Creakers. It's me and you in charge, he said. Normelatron? Ella asked. Exactly, Norman nodded. Ella peered into the swirling hole opening up in the floor as the bright morning sunlight filled the room. Norm, what is that? she asked, putting her pink heart-shaped sunglasses on. Norman took a deep breath and straightened out his neckerchief. That, my dear Ella, is the way to the Waleb. Chapter 4, Chapter 24, Sunlight The red light flickered out. Lucy's broadcast was over. Well done, Lucy Pops, Lucy's mum said, pulling her into a hug. Not bad, kid, said Piers Snorsgan, but never interrupt me again. Now what? May Annoying whined. He sounds a lot like his daughter, Lucy thought. Now we wait, she said. For what? For that. She pointed at the large tunnel she'd crept down earlier, the one that led from below Whiffington to Creakerland. Far in the distance, dirt and mud were falling. But not falling down like you would expect, it was falling up. It was crumbling from the floor all the way up to the ceiling as the boom, boom, boom of marching children could be heard echoing through the twisted tunnels of the Waleb from their bedrooms above. Suddenly, a streak of blinding hot sunlight pierced through the tunnel floor like a laser beam. Everyone jumped and gasped. May Annoying let out a high-pitched scream and hid behind Mrs. Annoying. What in the world is that? cried Mrs. Dunstan. Lucy smiled. Sunlight. Then another beam of the glorious light exploded through one of the wormholes and into the Waleb. Then another and another until the entire tunnel was flooded with the most brilliantly warm, fresh morning sunlight. The walls of the rotten tunnel began melting, dripping like a runny nose. And as the morning sun rose higher in the sky over Whiffington, its light shone deeper into the tunnel of the Waleb until it finally hit the rotten roots that were trapping the grown-ups and Lucy. There you go. One by one, the mouldy green bars dried up and turned into powdery dust, crumbling at the slightest human touch into puffs of decayed Waleb powder. It's working, cried old man Carvey. We're free! Not so fast, you rotten stinkers, screeched Grunt, and he and his army of creakers leapt back into mainland creakerland. Main street creakerland, even. Ah, it's day be daylight! Guff cried, seeing the warm light glistening magically out of Whiffington and up into their world, crumbling away the walls of the Waleb. She be laying in the break down here, gasped Scratch in horror. The kidlin be trying to kill us creakers, Sniff shrieked as they ducked for cover, hiding themselves in whatever dark shadows they could find. All the other creakers ran for it, disappearing down the tunnel as fast as they could with stinking smoke billowing from their black treacly bottoms as the sunlight touched them. Let's go, cried Lucy. 
leading all the grown-ups down the tunnel, feeling the kind of glow, kind glow of sunlight on her skin as they arrived at the hundreds of wormholes that led back to Whiffington. She stood over the first, which was now five times bigger than before and still growing, as the sunlight melted away all the rottenness of the walleb. She shielded her eyes from the light so she could see into it. Have a look at the picture. If you want to look at the pictures any more, you can just pause the YouTube video. Okay. Once her pupils had adjusted, she saw 50 or so friendly children peering down at them from her bedroom above. Norman! Lucy called, her heart skipping when she saw the unmistakable silhouette of Norman in his scout uniform. Lucy could see that he had propped her mattress up against the wall of her bedroom, allowing the fresh sunlight to chase away the shadows beneath her bed, where light never normally reached. The poor, pure sunbeams were too strong for the rottenness of the walleb, and with the mattresses out of the way, there was no stopping it penetrating the entrances to the walleb hiding under every child's bed. Lucy's plan was working, or in walleb's terms, it was all going horribly wrong. Lucy, sorry, we fell asleep! Norman shouted back. But then we saw you on the telly and we did what you said. We started stripping the bed and this hole just melted into the floor. Great, Lucy called. Well done. I helped too, called Ella. We both did. We're Normelotron. Lucy blinked. What? Normelotron, Ella shouted back. Oh, never mind. The stupid name was his idea anyway. We're here to rescue you. I hope there's a badge for this, Norman said. Suddenly, a long rope rose up out of the hole in front of Lucy like a snake from a basket. It had perfect knots at regular intervals ready to be climbed. As Lucy watched, the Whiffington kids threw ropes into the walleb through every sunny hole in the squashy floor. There were hundreds of them. Norman, these are some of the best knots I've ever seen. I'm so proud of you, shouted Norman's dad, a tear twinkling in his eye as he gazed at the ropes. Thanks, Norman! Lucy called down into the world above, and Norman gave her a huge smile back. Right, grown-ups, Lucy said, looking around. Take your time climbing out of the wallop. There's no need to rush. The grown-ups looked confused for a moment before Mrs Dunkston caught Lucy's wink and understood. She's speaking the wallop language, Mrs Dunkston hissed to the grown-up standing next to her. Pass it on. What she actually means is, Hurry up, this place is going to collapse, whispered Mr Quirk. The grown-ups started climbing down into the holes and back to Whiffington at once. Lucy marched around overseeing the escape, making sure they all got in. Old Man Carvey, Ella's parents, Paige Turner and every single mum and dad and grandma and granddad and aunt and uncle of every single boy and girl. She wasn't leaving anyone behind. Suddenly, the ground shook violently and more beams of brilliant sunlight exploded sideways out of the wall. Lucy, what's happening? shouted Norman, peering into the walleb. I don't know, she called. I think, I think maybe the walleb is becoming unstable. I don't know how much longer it's going to hold. As she said this, a little voice in her mind added, what's going to happen to it once we've all climbed out? She glanced back along the winding tunnel and saw the pointy ears of the four creakers poking out from behind lumps of melting mud and crumbling rock as they hid from the sunlight. Lucy's heart suddenly sank. Walleb is their home, she thought. Was she really going to leave and let this place turn to dust? Could she really destroy these creatures and their entire world? Lucy didn't want anyone to get hurt, not even the rotten creakers. Lucy, you go first, darling, Mrs Dunstan said, giving Lucy a little nudge towards the rope. No, Mum, you go first. I'm rescuing you, remember? Lucy said and pointed at the rope. Oh, yes. Mrs Dunstan said and quickly began climbing into what was now an enormous hole leading to Lucy's bedroom in Whiffington. Lucy watched as her mum climbed out and was lifted to safety by Norman. She had done it. She was the last human left in the walleb. She reached out and grabbed hold of the knotted rope, ready to leave this place behind once and for all. But just as her fist tightened around the rope, she felt someone else's fist tighten about her leg and she was jerked back into the walleb. Ah! Lucy screamed. But how could a creaker be grabbing her leg? The beams of sunlight pouring up through the holes into the walleb would surely have turned any normal creaker to dozy dust. Lucy looked back and got her answer immediately. This was no ordinary creaker. It's the creaker king, Lucy breathed. Here you go. I told you this was going to happen. I warned you that Lucy would have to face the king. Don't blame me. 
It's not like I'm making this stuff up. If you didn't go to the loo the last time I warned you, then now's your chance. No? You sure? Because by reading on, you agree to the terms and conditions that I, Tom Fletcher, the author of this book, am not responsible if you pee your pants with fright in the next chapter. I'm going to have to leave chapter 25 till tomorrow. I hope you've had a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day tomorrow. Enjoy the sunshine. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.